Well, folks, corporate America has chosen its God. Apparently, that is the God of paganism, like Mother Earth. I have to say that the 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 pagan mentality that's taken over corporate America is truly an astonishing thing. So there's an ad that was released yesterday by Apple in which they effectively call for worship of Mother Nature. I mean, this is just pure pagan Gaia worship nonsense. So this commercial is Tim Cook and supposedly the rest of the Apple board meeting with Mother Nature, who, of course, is a uh, is a black woman. And she shows up to express her unease at the progress that corporate America has made in protecting her, the environment. And uh, here's how this commercial goes. Mother Nature. Mother Nature, welcome to Apple. How, so how is the weather getting in? The weather was however I wanted it to be. Let's cut to the chase. In 2020, you promised to bring Apple's entire carbon footprint to zero by 2030. Henry David Thoreau over here said we have a profound opportunity to build a more sustainable future for the planet we share. I think our 10 o'clock said the same thing. They all do. All right. This is my third corporate responsibility gig today, so who wants to disappoint me first? Well, we've got some updates we are excited to share with you. Materials? Status? Is there a materials person here? Yes. We are in the process of eliminating all plastic from our packaging mm -hmm. by the end Let me guess. 50 years from now when someone else is left holding the bag? By the end of next year, actually. Okay, so uh, can, I, can I just point out how stupid this is? So there are a few things that are incredibly stupid about this. So this entire commercial, which apparently was unveiled at the Apple product launch to demonstrate just how environmentally friendly they are. First of all, it begins with Mother Nature arriving. And then they say, how's the weather? And it gets real dark. And Mother Nature says, whatever I want it to be. So what are we worried about you for? I'm confused. If Mother Nature is all that powerful, then why is it that we are not seeking to protect ourselves from you and not the other way around? Which, by the way, was the story of virtually all of human history until the last five minutes. Mother Nature trying to kill people and people trying to figure out a way not to die. It's pretty much the story of all of human survival and civilization. Still kind of the story of all of human survival and civilization. Okay, but immediately, it's an immediate contradiction. Then it turns into, how can we worship at the altar of Mother Nature? Well, we won't. What if we recycle all of our plastic? We don't even use plastic. What if we recycle all of the aluminum that we use in our phones? And this is what we're, we're proving to you, what good people we are. What amazing, amazing people we are. Don't, don't worry about values. Don't worry about like whether what you're doing is good or evil in terms of the product that you produce, what kind of protections it has for, say, children, how content actually reaches people via the phones and computers you put out. Don't worry about any of that stuff. What you really ought to worry about is Mother Nature. So first of all, the substitution, I mean, this is, it is paganism. Worshiping nature is a form of paganism because the reality is nature don't care about you. And if you're making pagan sacrifices to the gods, but what you're offering up is not, you know, grain and meat, what you're offering up is instead like recycled aluminum. I'm not sure what the difference is. Maybe my favorite part about all of this is the Apple board, the supposed Apple board meeting with mother nature here. It's super diverse. You got a black lady, you got an Asian woman, you got an Indian woman. Here's what the actual Apple board looks like right now. That is the whitest group of people in human history. That is a very white group of people. There's maybe one person on this entire list who is not white. Um, so, yeah, they wouldn't want to put that in the commercial because then it would just be a bunch of white people meeting with a black lady. And that wouldn't look, you know, nearly as good or, or quite as diverse. What I like about this is it's good when the mask comes off. When, when corporate America basically says, when people like Tim Cook are like, well, you know, my, my chief goal is to worship Mother Nature and to use my giant company to do so. Meanwhile, I'll produce all of our product in communist China where they completely abuse the environment and don't care about anything. Yeah, I, I, I don't believe you, but I, but I appreciate the sentiment. You know a company is looking out for you and they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it. It's great news for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and includes a mobile hotspot with no price increase whatsoever. If you've considered Pure Talk before, but you haven't made the switch, well, now would be a time to take a second look. For just 20 bucks a month, you get unlimited talk text and now 50% more 5G data plus their new mobile hotspot. It's just one reason I love Pure Talk. They're veteran owned. They only hire the best customer service team located right here in the United States of America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in the country. 
Remember, you vote with how you spend your money, so stop supporting companies that actually don't like you very much. That's not true of Pure Talk. That's the reason they sponsor the show. When you go to puretalk.com slash Shapiro, you'll save an additional 50% off your first month because they actually value you. That's puretalk.com slash Shapiro. They have great coverage, I know, because I use Pure Talk myself. Pure Talk is wireless for Americans by Americans right now. They're giving you a fantastic deal. Head over to puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Save 50% off your first month because, again, this is a company that actually cares about you. I love watching my baseball, even though my White Sox are absolutely terrible this year. But I, I got to tell you, it sucks the joy out of watching baseball when your team is really bad. But one thing that can help inject some fun back into the sport is using prize picks. Prize picks is the easiest and fastest way to play daily fantasy sports. You pick two to six players and you choose whether they will score more or less than their prize picks projection. You can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. There's no competition against other people. It's just you versus the projections. Prize Picks offers projections on pretty much every sport there is. NBA, MLB, NFL, NHL, PGA, college sports, esports, NASCAR, disc golf, whatever you are into. Prize Picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your accounts this football season. Producer Jake, he's been raving about Prize Picks. He's been talking about the simplified interface of Prize Picks. It's a lot easier to use than other fantasy sports apps. Monday night, Jake took a beating when Aaron Rodgers got injured since he picked Aaron Rodgers to have more than 235.5 passing yards. That turns out to be like not a great pick by, by Jake, but he had fun. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with promo code Ben. If you deposit 100 bucks, Prize Picks will give you 100 bucks. If you deposit 50 bucks, Prize Picks will give you 50 bucks. Don't forget to enter promo code Ben and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Mitt Romney is now announcing his retirement from the Senate of the United States. And Mitt Romney is one of the more peculiar figures in the history of American politics. He was a, a very, very moderate Massachusetts Republican governor. He ran as the conservative in 2008, you'll recall, against John McCain. He came in second to John McCain in that nominating battle. And he was considered the more conservative candidate against John McCain, largely because of immigration. Then he ran again in 2012, and he won the nomination. And then he lost the presidency to Barack Obama in an election that I think actually broke the country because you had an incredibly milk toast moderate Republican running against a radical Democrat, and the radical Democrat wins by cobbling together a coalition of the supposedly oppressed against the, against the, the demographically elderly white majority and all this nonsense. And, uh, and he breaks politics permanently, does, does Barack Obama in the United States. Okay, so then Mitt Romney goes to the Senate in Utah. He moves to Utah because he is a Mormon. He's elected to Senate overwhelmingly. And he proceeds to work with Democrats on a on a wide variety of issues. His voting record overall is pretty conservative, but on some key issues on certain bills, like, for example, the Infrastructure Act, he ends up working with Democrats. The widespread perception from Republicans about Mitt Romney is almost a circle. It starts from he's a moderate Republican, not sure how conservative he is, but I guess he's got an R by his name, too. He's very he's he's a harsh conservative. He's a harsh conservative in 2008, too. He's a harsh conservative, but he didn't really stand up to Barack Obama the way that he should. Probably that's why he lost. If he had been only a little bit of harsher, too, he's kind of a moderate Republican. He kind of has an R by his name, but not all that conservative. Here was Mitt Romney announcing he's not going to run for re-election. At the end of another term, I'd be in my mid-80s. Frankly, it's time for a new generation of leaders. They're the ones that need to make the decisions that will shape the world they will be living in. Now, we face critical challenges, mounting national debt, climate change, and the ambitious authoritarians of Russia and China. Neither President Biden nor former President Trump are leading their party to confront those issues. Political motivations too often impede the solutions that these challenges demand. The next generation of leaders must take America to the next stage of global leadership. While I'm not running for re-election, I'm not retiring from the fight. I'll be your United States Senator until January of 2025. Okay, so he then shared in an interview with McKay Coppins his, his hatred for all the rest of the Republican Party. And, and here is the thing about this kind of stuff. We have a peculiar standard inside the Republican Party for what counts as loyalty and what counts as disloyalty. For, so Mitt Romney is attacking all the other Republicans. He shared a unique disgust for Senators Josh Howley and Ted Cruz, who he said, quote, put politics above the interests of liberal democracy and the Constitution. He also went after Senator J.D. Vance. And I don't, I don't know that I can disrespect someone more than J.D. Vance. And, and you know, so, so that is considered disloyal by a lot of Republicans. I hear it. 
I hear it. Like, why are you directing your fire inside the House? Also, I tend to hold that rule about Donald Trump attacking fellow Republicans inside the House. But it's it's very strange to me that certain types of attacks are considered completely verboten and certain types of attacks, depending on who is doing them, are considered totally appropriate. So when Donald Trump suggests that in some way Ron DeSantis is a rhino, his fans are like, yeah, that's true. And you're like, wait, that's not true at all. And then when people attack Mitt Romney as a rhino, then the same people will be like, well, that's that's appropriate or inappropriate. Depending. Like, how about one standard for whether you attack people inside the caucus or not? Like when they violate actual conservative principles, then you attack them. Donald Trump spent the uh, spent the day celebrating the ouster of Mitt Romney, which is, again, like Donald Trump spends more time celebrating the ouster of Republican senators than any Democrat that I know. He, he put out a statement saying, fantastic news for America, the great state of Utah and the Republican Party, Mitt Romney, sometimes referred to as Pierre Delecto. <laughs> I will say the guy's really funny. That, that was his, uh, his peculiar screen name on like an alternative Twitter account. Will not be seeking a second term in the U.S. Senate where he did not serve with distinction. A big primary fight against him was in the offing, but now that will not be necessary. Congrats to all. Make America great again. Now, again, I'm fine with Mitt Romney stepping down and I'm fine with a lot of people thinking that he wasn't conservative enough in Utah. I agree with some of those criticisms, a lot of those criticisms. I'll just point out that Donald Trump has now celebrated the ouster of of people ranging from Jeff Flake to John McCain to Mitt Romney. I mean, like he does this kind of stuff all the time. So when you're talking about like it's bad for Romney to attack other Republicans in the Senate, it's not great to attack other Republicans in the Senate, you, you, you might think. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah. Me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda.